welcome back to the evolution of a snake i'm zach and i'm madeline and we are just two crickets on a world tour and we went through something we went to the eras tour and i mean this whole ordeal and experience has been something that has tested my my will to live my ability to rock my desire to be a swifty quite frankly like it's been the best of times and it's been the worst of times and there have been some worst of times trust me if you can believe it i don't understand these people who are going to like fifteen thousand shows and it seems like they don't never say anything negative about it it's like so your feet weren't hurting so you didn't have to walk a hundred thousand miles immediately after dancing and singing and in, screaming in with, your, cowboy with, your, Louboutins. with your toes about to fall off i find that hard to believe i don't i have decided that the eras tour while the show is happening is fun everything else about it is not fun that's what I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Um, I think that the best part about the Eras tour is getting to really just be so deliciously fed by so much of Taylor's career. Like, I think the biggest impression I took away from the show was how impressive it is that it's this size and that the show can go on for that long and be engaging the entire time. Obviously, we there are moments in the show that sag, and I think drag on a little bit too long which we will get into but i think on the whole who else can do a show like this of this nature at this length in so many different cities with such insanely high demand like i kept looking around and seeing people screaming the words to fucking our secret song i wish you would or to a song like the last great american dynasty like you just it didn't used to be like that at taylor shows um, we were talking earlier about how, like, even as recently as, Repu although Reputation Tour is not recent at this point, but the most recent tour, Reputation, when she would do surprise songs, oftentimes you would look around and people wouldn't know it, which is there's nothing wrong with that. But now it seems like everybody knows every single song. And that shocks me. It shocks me. It shocks me because it feels like, it feels like. I'm going to give Lizard a note also. Lizard, try and keep your mic semi-still. She's been waving it Good in the luck. air like she Good just don't care. luck. And <laughs> I say that. Good luck. Well. I'll try my best. I'm going to request her to try. But sorry, what were you saying? I was just looking at your mic waving in the air. Um, like I just don't care. It's gone, baby. It's gone. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, so we should talk about like our ticket ordeal because I think that that was. Right. Well, and, and you know, I don't have any notes because I was on the plane. That's true. So <laughs> Madeline was on the plane. We wanted to be front row night one center diamond. Spoiler alert, not our reality. That was not our journey. It was not our experience. There were these two very sinister gays in the front row that I'm telling you, if you put a gun to their head and said, sing the song Mastermind, they would not fucking be able to do it. So what makes a gay sinister? <laughs> <laughs> a sinister gay is like an extremely buff militant queen who wears tank tops all the time and a backwards baseball cap and is dating someone that looks exactly like him except one of them has a beard and the other one doesn't and they love reputation that's what a sinister swifty gay looks like to me and they walk around stony faced with the look of their face being like i am front row and you are not and that is a piece of queer culture <laughs> and that, that you is a saw first because i said those are sinister gays and you looked and said yep well, I, I, I didn't know quite what you meant by sinister gays. I thought they were sinister because they were in front row. Well, that's part of it. I didn't know that there was lore, you know, well, what makes them sinister. I didn't know that. But now I know. It's it's everything that was just described. And, and the, when you said that, I was like, I feel like I've seen that exact gay man a million times. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. They go about. to Equinox. They usually live in cities like Chicago or New York. They, like, have some sort of also equally soulless and sinister corporate job that you know and then on the weekends they do like you know what i can't i'm not even gonna get into that let's let's just let's skip forward so th basically we did not get front row night one center diamond we got 13th row night one center diamond and people definitely squeezed in right before this, taylor came on this was the main issue this was the main and it's like okay so it's it's you probably have like just enough space for your, for your personal 
body and space just about in when you when everybody is where they're supposed to be but i swear to you we, the show was just about to start right and this couple this uh, i don't know if they're a couple but it was like i haven't a, seen them the whole night hadn't long. seen them the whole night there long, were no and they empty seats in our row showed up and we're like squeezing through Muscled the row in. and zach was like where are they gonna go sit there's nowhere to sit here I and i kind of forgot about it because literally taylor was the clock was on the screen and when taylor was about to come on so i forgot about it and then all of a sudden it just felt like i have no personal space mm-hmm. because those two assholes i'm not afraid to say it squeeze in where they did not and they belong. were not swifties and they let me are tell lucky you. that i'm not a psychopath because i know that they did that and i could have said something and i could have gotten security security, security. but we didn't know we didn't who it was i thought it could the girlies next to you they could have also snuck in because when i was i complained very loudly about people sneaking in and it getting too tight and they looked like they were gonna throw up I did notice that they looked at us. I d- I couldn't tell if it was like a look of, oh my god, who snuck in, or like, it's us. Please but don't they tell had us. seats. They had a place to sit, mm-hmm. and that's different to me. They had a place to sit. If you don't have a place to sit, you cannot be in the row. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're gonna sneak in, at least make sure you have a chair, an empty seat. Perhaps. At least make sure you have a fucking chair, an empty seat. We also had the misfortune. I had someone who was exactly my height, but with horrible ramen noodle hair that made him a little bit taller than me. And he was, can I just say, a fake fan. Like, he really was a fake fan. He was dressed in reputation wear and freaked when ready for it came on and then knew none of the words. He knew, like, some of the words to August. He had his phone up the entire time. He was irritating me. I was I was over him. I was spreading hateful and negative energy in his direction. Uh, we also had a guy with massive hair. Huge hair. Yeah, big. and But he wasn't tall. No, so thank he, God he was It's just tall. like his hair is in a lot of my videos and we have to stand. <laughs> I mean, it, he, it wasn't making me laugh. It's at not the time. a crime to have big hair. No, uh, it's it's an unfortunate thing for the crickets. It's it was unfortunate for the crickets. I had also there were these girlies in front of us who were just kind of hitting the hooch. You know, they were ha- <laughs> they were there to have fun. They were not there to be. Stands. I would say they were in their late thirties yeah. and mm-hmm. they were on their seventh or eighth alcoholic slushy you know before those, like, Cruel Summer even came on. Tall drinks that they sell in those big cups, like you get them in Las Vegas. They had them <laughs> at Soldier Field, and they the ladies were. They were lashing into them. (laughs) They were just guzzling them down. And they kept leaving during the show to go and get more. And then obviously they were pissing every five minutes because... Well, There's no way that you can consume that much and that not, much liquid and not tinkle. We thought one of them was displaying a little bit of Karen behavior, but she was actually fine. She actually just rocks. I could tell that she had it in her. She... It was dormant. It was something in the eyes. It was something in her it was eyes. something in the eyes. But we walked in and we were gagged. We were very gagged. We were very excited to be there. We were freaking out, getting ready. And, you know, if you haven't seen our outfits, got to go look at our Instagram because our outfits, frankly, slayed. Madeline, why don't you talk them through the theme and the thought process behind the outfits we put together? So um, originally we were going to do debut, but I couldn't find a dress that I thought like a lot of the like this is this would be a debut dress. That's and true. I was like, I'm not wearing this to the heiress tour. So I was like, I want something with a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of sheen, a little bit of shine. So I I decided to go with Fearless instead. But um Zach kept it totally country debut. So we, I guess we I guess you could say we went as country tailor. I went as fearless tailor, he went as debut. Um so I wore like a you know a, a fearless gold, dress. It has a gold to be dress said. with tassels and then I had a tassel jacket and I rocked it. And, and cowboy boots. Saying. Oh, and the cowboy boots that made me want to kill myself. Well I'll and it, they stayed it was <laughs> too early when i started to want like it wasn't even like oh i'm starting to want to kill myself by folklore it was like by mm. by evermore i was like i need to get these boots off my feet which is way too early that's way too early <laughs> yeah. i was so i was debut taylor and i had a jean jacket that i got custom made by my friend Teresa. her instagram is at hey Kulai, i think and she is an awesome artist who does like hand painted fabric stuff and i also asked her to do me so she did the denim jacket with a bunch of like taylor stuff Huge compliment getter, right, Madeline? Mm-hmm. Everybody loved the People jacket. stopping me every five minutes. And yeah. I kept saying, I didn't do it because they wanted to compliment my artistry. But tonight, it's mine. I did it. <laughs> yeah. I made it. I, I made did. It. And when they ask me how, I say, do you want a friendship bracelet? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that's all I got for you. that's all I have for you. <laughs> so I wore the jacket. And then I had a pair of custom house down boots that were supposed to be a direct replica of Taylor's 2006 baby blue cowboy boots. And they were, they were such a serve. We unboxed them in the Airbnb and I was so excited that I put them on straight away and I did an Irish jig. And when I did my Irish jig cracks, and we should have known. We should have known. The leather. So it was like a secondhand pair of boots because Teresa Queen loves to work sustainably, which I was like slay. But what I didn't think about was that used boots have like worn 
worn like creases in them so when you paint over that and you move the toe box it looks now the boots look as though they have been bitten by sharks it's worth it to note that like the the important like the cool design of the boot that's the tailor and the swift on the back it it says swiftologist that's intact it's perfect but the place where the foot moves the toe box is toe box is completely it looks (laughs) it looks like a dog came and like (laughs) yeah and there's kind of no saving it no it's done it's finished it's done it's lover yeah. it's it's jover it's jover it's jover for the boots um but we were both in our house down boots and i have to say i felt like our outfits were very good i, lo- I like the way we looked a lot compared to the talent around us it was pretty good now i'm trying to think if we saw any costumes that truly gagged me i think there was a girly in front of us that did the you need to calm down look and she had the the hideous bird tattoo on her back and she did her hair the same way i thought she looked pretty good she there was a reputation tour girl in the ready for it outfit that looked amazing she did she looked really good makeup hair everything yeah. like direct replica she looked so good there were a lot of sheen party dresses and a lot of party city cowboy hats it was exactly what i expected boots as well yeah it was exactly what i expected the house down boots all over the place not a single outfit that i said that surprises me Mm -hmm. (laughs) like never everybody was doing you know and it's like how many there's not there's only so many that you can do except for the girly that we saw when we were walking in so we saw this girl who zach pointed her out to me and i looked at her and i was like it wasn't exact but it almost was a replica of taylor swift we don't even know if this was intentional a replica of taylor swift coming out during the red era pre-red coming out of lunch with mark foster from boss of the people <laughs> dressed like a, bo- a bohemian girl. it was in her Queen. Joni mitchell obsession it was era. In her, and she's had that floppy hat on and that long sort of what is that called argyle that it's style not, it's not cute it's 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 you you look up the picture you just look, look at the Taylor picture Swift and that's literally foster. exactly what this girlie was wearing and i don't think it was intentional i think it was just like i'm gonna wear she my had, country outfit and that's what she had on but it was like eerie. i was i was i, I looked at madeline and i was like there's no does she fuck. know i was like there's no way she knows because it's too it's like almost too good and yeah so there were a lot of a lot of outfits so many gays in short shorts so many gays in short shorts including my enemy in front of me who wore an ill-fitting pair of short shorts that he didn't have the legs to wear and i'm just saying that because i mean a fucking hater because he blocked my view of cruel summer that's like it just has to be said i'm trying to think of the moments in the show where, where our seats were because they were technically good seats they were very close there were moments i think i saw her really clearly during august and during a lot of folklore we saw actually the beginning of cruel summer when she came over to our side i think i saw her pretty good we also saw her on the lift lover not great actually i could i couldn't see her at all during lover which kind of sucks because like you'd think i thought that i was going to be seeing her pretty well every time she was up on the lift but the thing is that you have to consider when you're down there by the diamond this is for anybody yeah i I actually would not recommend i actually wouldn't recommend the diamond especially not where we were because like if you're not off to we were dead center Mm -hmm. um and if you're not off to the side a lot of times when she's up on the diamond up on the lift hand in front of you you're looking in front of you you're looking at dancers and you're not looking at taylor which is i mean the dancers are great but it's like obviously i I don't want to see them i don't want to see them as much as i want to see taylor i think that's we we did there were moments where we were completely gagged and saw like a great view of her but it wasn't consistent like it wasn't all the way through no and that which was a bummer you know it's like you it's you sp- not like you these spend, tickets were cheap we spent no, a lot of you spend money the kind of money that you spend on these and it's like i i i it's not even like i have to see her crystal clear the whole time but if there was even like one song one song good. where i could really see her the, the whole, whole time, time i would have been like that was worth it but it's like i suppose the stage is actually not very well designed for floor seats unless you are literally in row one no the, the thing is that i feel like the, the way that she set it up was so that everybody gets a chance to see her and you do and, and it, you definitely you do, do. Do. you do but it's like if it's not really designed for floor beyond the first few rows mm-hmm. because even still there are certain sections where even if you're in the first few rows like that first section section a right where she like basically only walks past for anti-hero and fearless mm-hmm. that's not a good front row to be because if you're not staring at her walking past she doesn't stop there if you're not staring at her walking past you're staring at her back the entire evening yeah so like your front row on the floor but like what are you actually seeing exactly and, and these are the kind of things that like obviously you don't know until you see the actual cd map and you don't know where she's going to be so it's and actually then it kinda... depends on who's in front of you as right. well it's totally hit and miss and i would say that if you feel bad about not being able to be on the floor for this tour don't because unless you're in the first one to five rows yeah. i would say it's not worth it 
not especially not the prices mm-hmm. if if like theoretically like if we had paid like a thousand to fifteen hundred for them then i would have been Maybe. like whatever but it's like multiple thousands of dollars i mean d- listen i don't regret it at all i really don't regret it i had a really good time and i love being close to her and seeing her facial expressions like that part is fun but if I could do it over again, I would I would actually wait until the day of the show and then buy a little bit closer to the time because the prices do drop, but not significantly enough where it would be worth it even to get those tickets. Yeah. Well. It's over. But we had the time <laughs> of our lives. I, I, I want to impress <laughs> upon you that we were still like, we were really rocking throughout the show. It was great. We had mm-hmm. a good time. And we were together. It's always a sleigh. That doesn't happen very often. That doesn't happen very often. Doesn't happen very often. In fact, it never does. <laughs> <laughs> it literally never happens. Uh, should we briefly mention the openers? Owen? I thought he was good. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. He kept referring to us as Eras Tour, which he eventually shortened to Eras. He'd be like, hey, Eras. And I'd be like, please don't call me that. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's not, not who I am. Name. That's not I'll who take I am. Chicago, but I am not Eras. I'll take Swifties, too. Yeah. He said Swifties a couple of times. Openers were very gracious and profusely thanked Taylor many yeah. times. Then we had Girl in Red, whose personality really bothered me. Really? She, I found her very irritating. I didn't mind her. I thought she was good. Her stage banter was boring to me and annoying. You guys ever heard of Norway? No, you haven't. When everyone was like, yes, we have. Is that the only thing she said that annoyed you? No, <laughs> towards the end when she was like, I just feel so small up here. And you guys are all so small all the way back there. Ah. Like, I just thought she was irritating. This is cracking me up. She's literally the most innocuous person on the face of the planet. When she was on stage, I was like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, girl in red. I, I thought she was good. Um, I she had a lot it. of energy. Yeah, she had a lot of energy. She was she up there gave bouncing it around. She was bouncing around like a piece of popcorn in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I would not pick them as my openers for tour but i'll take any one of her gracie no, i mean out of out of the the crop that you could have gotten obviously owen and girl and red are not top of the list mm-hmm. but i it wasn't like we were watching gracie abrams owen so. came to the floor to meet people and people truly don't know who owen is because there was like four people wanting to take pictures and nobody was singing any of his songs i didn't recognize any of them they were good but i guess he just must be very very green yeah new to the scene yeah but that i mean he slayed he was really good he danced really well he, he was rocking up he there. was super confident as well that's yeah. what i noticed like he was he didn't look scared at all and i would have been very scared for yeah. him especially if people don't know your stuff mm-hmm. like that's so overwhelming but he's got a fan in me i'll be staying tuned i liked it i don't know if i'm gonna flick it up but if it comes on i'm banging <laughs> I am banging. So the clock, I guess we'll just go through the show now. The clock comes on and we are in a, we're in a, a place of We despair. had already been dancing to applause at that point. The applause came on and we were out of our seats like the end of the world Which was we coming. shouldn't have done because <laughs> we needed to save our energy. No, it's so true. And this is also another tip. Like if there is a moment where you're like, I don't care about this so much. Maybe I should sit down. Sit. Even if you feel self-conscious about it because nobody else is sitting, just fucking sit down. Mm-hmm. You will thank yourself later. Yes, you will. And also, I would say, if you don't care for the openers, you don't need to be there for them. Like, people were still arriving as Taylor was kind of about to come on. And I would say, you know, to miss the crowd, like, if you don't want to be, I don't know, like, waiting for ages in the sun. That's the other thing. It's outside. So you got to take that into consideration as well. I would say just show up before Taylor comes on. She comes on at 8, like, religiously, unless there's rain or some sort of disruption. She comes on at 8. So we, yesterday, we went pretty early before any of the openers started but but today what we're going to do for the second show is go like pretty much right before she comes on because we saw the openers already we don't need to be seeing it again but the opening was very exciting uh it was cool to see the show with the lights on the lights on the sun with the sun on with the sun was on the sun turned on <laughs> it was uh it was it was on dimmer actually it was going it was going yep. dim mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when did it go dark not fearless? until fe- like the i end remember of fearless. fearless was was pretty dark i remember that because everything was light up and the, and the fireworks the out. archer it was kind of transitioning yeah it was cool so the opening really good cruel summer obviously mad lizard and i i mean that was a broken moment yeah that was a moment where i didn't know what was going on around me i don't know who was there i do know that like i couldn't i when she first came out i couldn't see her and then it wasn't until like t- five or ten seconds in that i could actually see her and then my videos from cool summer are bad i couldn't see her for for I would say I saw her half and half. Like, I half didn't see her, and I half did see her. Um, and I don't know why. What am I talking about? She looked like a fucking Barbie. She looked like a Barbie. When she came out, I just turned to Madeline and was like, she looks perfect. Because she truly, like, airbrushed to the gods. Like, the, her skin was skinning. Her hair was herring. Her hair's gotten really long. And I'm loving it. I hope she doesn't cut it anytime soon. It's thinner than I remember. 
but I, maybe that's just because she's wearing it straight yeah. a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. But I mean, she looked fucking perfect. Really, she did. And the power of the crowd screaming that cruel summer bridge. It was powerful. It was something to behold. People are really getting into the cruel summer. They are. And they should be. They should have been getting into it four years ago. Well, we led the charge. We led the charge. Justice for Cruel Summer and it's coming. We don't need to say it anymore. It's here. Mm -hmm. She Also, what I've noticed is definitely because this tour is so long, there's less banter between songs. Like, there's only a couple of moments where she does her long, rambling storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I didn't mind that. But whenever she talked, I was like, transfixed. Yay, queen, talk to me. Mm -hmm. So between, there was only a little bit of talking between Cruel Summer and the man. The man was fun. I like the beat. The man was fun. I that's all I have to say about that. We could see to her pretty down. well for that. You need to come down was fun because it was short. Mm-hmm. Like it was just as long as it had to be. You got to scream Shade never made everybody less gay and everybody wants to scream that. I mean it's it's the it's a gospel truth. Shade literally never it made never anybody did. less gay. It didn't. And nobody could control that. And the gays screamed. It was the first show of Pride Month, so she will get into that later. <laughs> this, and then after You Need to Calm Down comes my first kind of, I guess, note or critique of, of the Lover set. I personally, I would cut the song Lover. You can really see in her face that she does not care to sing this song. We were lolling. Like, she looked a little bored. But also, I am bored of that song, so I didn't really want to hear it. Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't cut Lover. I would cut The Archer, though. Oh, because the Archer. there was no point to that. I was just standing there. And also, nobody moved. I hate to tell you. Like, throughout the night, there were random reactions to songs that I didn't think would be so popular. But The Archer, to me, was kind of a resounding flop. Everyone was just kind of like, eh, okay. It was just on. Even she was just kind of like, mm, I'm going to yeah. start around this stage and pose and look moody. Yeah, and that's the other thing about The Archer. There's nothing special about it. It's literally just her... I wonder if there's a like a some reason. It's a transitional why. song. It's like a transitional song for her to walk and, around, and like the dancers aren't there because they're getting changed, maybe. And it like it kind of brings the vibe down, though. It does. I think that there could be a better song that she could be doing other than the. Archer. Lover's already slow. You know, she could she could get on her piano and mm-hmm. hit up. I forgot that you existed, and just you know. I mean, if I had to choose, I'd rather listen. To I or forgot she that could, you if she wants to strut around the stage and just sing a song, she could do Death by a Thousand Cuts. Give us that. There's a lot of choices on on Lover that she could have done, and mm-hmm. instead she gives us the Archer, and it's a it might be controversial. I but didn't like that. I, I personally like didn't. I was not a fan of that, and I think she also looked bored. What what outfit did we get? We just got the plain regular regular gold. I think one, so. I was trying right? to like look at my videos and like figure it out, but I couldn't tell. I just see I think we just got the gold one, yeah. but she looked obviously snatched and yeah. slayed. Then okay, so another thing I noticed this tour: the quick changes are fucking quick. They are so fast. The only one that takes a long time is the Enchanted Ball Gown Slay, uh, for obvious reasons. I think that, that dress pretty, you know, yeah, takes I mean, a little time to get in and out of it. You can't slip into that thing. It's got to be, yeah, she probably has to have it put on. And doesn't she have to go from the Enchanted Dress into the Reputation? No, no, no. She goes from the Enchanted Dress into the Folklore Dress? It's this so like hard. The, the show is so long. Yeah, this is like the that article that says, like, oh, Swifties are reporting amnesia. <laughs> after a scene it's like that's how i feel it's like i literally don't know i remember evermore into rep yeah but i, don't, I think i think it might be rep into enchanted yes i think you're right and yeah. then we go into folklore after that or red okay this is this is this is mental illness so after the archer we get fearless and i mean give it up for the birthday girl give it up for the birthday girl i really enjoyed the fearless performance i this is starting to get into parts of the show where i knew obviously what songs were coming next i knew what songs she was going to play but i didn't know all the little details of like what actually happens on the stage i didn't know that a, a parade of sparks rained down i did not know that and you were say, really gagged by that i was i was like uh-huh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> it gagged me and i i really and it was enjoyed very it. fearlessly and it was very fearlessly and i liked it i liked seeing Paul Sidoti. Oh. <laughs> Zach just kept going, Paul Sidoti. <laughs> Paul Sidoti. Paul Sidoti like, is ageless. Yeah. Like, he has always looked like a 40-year-old he man. He still has, has the never Kate looked Goslin younger, haircut. and he will never look older. And he still looks like Kate Goslin. Yeah. <laughs> and he has flawless right. skin. I'll and give that's that to his him. Right. And that's his right. And that is his right to look like Kate Goslin. And Whatever his base routine is for his stage makeup, incredible. We saw Amos. He was... Paul was... I, saw, I got a great view of Paul. Oh, we got a really good view we of Paul. We were looking in his eyes. Yeah. And he was rocking it out. He w- he was like, I've been doing this shit for so long and I still love it. Yeah. <laughs> so Taylor pops out of that little door with her sparkly guitar. Not the real one, but a sparkly guitar. Also, her outfits and everything, a lot more sparkly up close. Throughout yeah, it many, was, it was, wow. many times. I was gagged. She by was it. 
making the whole place shimmer the entire especially time especially the reputation fit was like I, that is yeah. a lot more sparkly than i an, anticipated the all too well guitar i didn't realize that was a sparkly guitar mm-hmm. a black mm-hmm. sparkly mm-hmm. guitar mm-hmm. it was great it was great so fearless i think she she also i think almost forgot to do the spin so she like had to really quickly get into it. position to do it i did notice that like not her best spin i remember there was like a split second where it's like she's not doing it and then she was like mm, yeah because <laughs> there isn't that much time between no. like when she's singing yeah and and she has to go out pretty far so that she has yeah. the space to do the spin. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it was, it was everything. It was literally everything. And it, she always looks like she's, I think she really likes Fearless, the song. She looks like she's fucking raging up there. As she, she should must, be. She or it's early should. in the show. She's still got a twinkle in her eye. Mm-hmm. And she fucking spins around. Her energy levels didn't flag throughout the show, which was kind of crazy to me as well. She never looked tired or, yeah, I didn't she really never see her looked breaking. T- I never saw a moment where I was like, she looks like she's tired i I don't know if it was just us as well or if she's been like this on all the shows but she was really on one on the night that we were there she was like having a lot of fun and we'll get into that later she was like really really enjoying the crowd like she was really Mm -hmm. gagged by it and this Mm -hmm. was i think important to note one of the smaller shows on the on the tour because most of the stadiums are like 70 to eighty thousand people soldier field is like 60 so it is you know a little it's more intimate this is the closest to an arena show that we're going to get so we go from Fearless into Love Story and You Belong With Me. And what can we say? Classics. Classics. I mean, it was fun. Everybody, I, people went fucking ballistic for You Belong With Me. More so than Love way. Story. Yeah, a lot more so than Love Story. Like people were, I felt like the entire floor was jumping up and down. I did not because I saw that going bad. I saw that going poorly in my boots. So I did. So I stayed planted firmly. I did. And I jumped and a had lot, it, And how did that go for you? <laughs> I stayed planted, and I stand by that. There were a couple of moments where I was jumping up and down, but not for the entirety of the chorus of You Belong With Me. I did, and it <laughs> was a regret, mostly because my boots ripped even more. And I also, my feet, I can't even talk about it. My dogs were barking at the end of that night. Mm-hmm. They were really fucking bad. Yeah. And, yeah, I needed some reprieve, and that was not that was not a smart thing for me to do. Love Story not as big of a response as I thought it would have. I mean, obviously everybody screamed, but it's interesting that over the years, Love Story has usurped, uh, sorry, You Belong With Me has usurped Love Story as the Fearless song. Because before, Taylor tried to pretend that it wasn't. <laughs> she definitely, I think there was definitely a time period where, I won't say that she was trying to bury You Belong With Me because obviously she wasn't, but I don't think that she, I think there, what, there did come a time where she was like, this song is embarrassing. But she couldn't deny its power. It's raw power. Mm -hmm. And she finally let the flag fly. Let me tell you, every man, every straight man in that stadium was rocking the fuck out to You Belong With Me. Mm -hmm. I saw a couple of boyfriends jumping up and down. And I was like, as you should. As you fucking should. Men, straight men love You Belong With Me. They really do. If you ask them to name a Taylor Swift song, that's the one they're going to say. I don't know why. They do. I mean, good taste. Because, you know what? And that's, we have to give them that. It's the moment. It's the moment. It really is the moment. So the Fearless set also to me, it's very brief. It's short. It feels short, especially compared to Evermore and Folklore, obviously. Yes. I, I And I guess I kind of get it. It's like, okay, if we could add one more song to the, to the Fearless set, what song would we add? I would take Mr. Perfectly Fine or I would take Forever and Always. Those would be my two picks. What would you want? I'm trying to think of a song that she, like, would actually, like, make... Like what was the other single from Fearless? Fifteen. That doesn't really. That doesn't um, fit the vibe. Because then we go into a very slow moment. Right. Okay. So I guess I honestly I guess I understand why it is the way that it is. Mm-hmm. I I guess I get it. I guess I if I had to add one forever and always, but I know she wouldn't do that. No. So and it doesn't fit the vibe with what else is in the set because no. it's happy. Right. It's a yeah. happy set. It's not supposed to be like sad. That's kind of what I think she's angling for, mm-hmm. especially to have that right before evermore is actually really good so i guess i wouldn't change anything about it it's short it's sweet it's cute it's fun and it's nostalgic so i give it you know I what give actually it i would change i would ask her to do the, all of fearless the whole song yeah that would re- that would yeah. fix it actually mm-hmm. for me just do the whole thing because you know what's really fun screaming capture it remember it that's yeah. really fun and she and and you know what she could have been saying uh chicago now capture but, it but i would i would fly that. to houston and do houston texas now capture it remember it i would do that I would. And and did we get it? No, no. But I snakes digress. lose. We lost snakes that lose. one. Snakes news. Snakes lose. Up next, the Evermore set. Something that I really started to notice around the Evermore set was how intricate and expensive the stage is. Like 
when the trees come up for tis the damn season they don't just like rise up from the stage they sprout like they look like they're growing and then they become these christmas trees it's really beautiful yeah they, that gagged me i was surprised when i saw it i was like what the hell mm -hmm. <laughs> the trees come out of the ground that was something that i didn't know um occurred and something that i always thought as well just from the videos i don't think i ever because i didn't want to spoil it once i knew we were going to go to tour i didn't realize that a lot of the evermore and folklore songs have been beefed up a little bit and the production has been like enhanced not in a super obvious way but like the end of tis the damn season the drums came in was the first time i noticed it and i turned to madeline i was like she ate that up yeah it was it, Tis the Damn Season was really, really good. It was not as much as a, of a snooze as I thought it was going to be. And she cut the second chorus, mm -hmm. or cut the second verse, excuse mm -hmm. me. So it was actually like, it, it wasn't as much of a drag as I thought it was going to be. It's pretty baffling it what she chooses to cut and what she chooses to do in full. Like, there are some decisions that just do not make any sense. This one made sense to me, though. Yeah. Like, we don't need to do all of Tis the Damn Season. Yeah. But it was very effective. Also, something I noticed just in general with Folklore and Evermore, she was engaged the entire night, but she was, like, so in it when she was doing those two sets. Like, you can tell she really loves that music and is very proud of it because she's so... I don't know. I just noticed that she was so engaged and, like... It's hard to do those two sets in a stadium setting because they are like, for lack of a better word, more boring songs. But what you notice, I guess, when you get to be a little bit closer is that she's very, like her gestures and all are very like careful and big. And she really, I guess, gives a performance. Like she's really in character. Like when Willow came on, I started laughing. I was like, lol. <laughs> This is this is crazy. It's, and it served. And it, did. it served so hard. I couldn't believe it. I, I thinking back on it, like in my memories, Evermore was definitely one of my favorite parts of the show because Willow was giving cunt. Mm -hmm. Tis the damn season went off. Mm -hmm. Marjorie, deeply emotional moment. To it be a was. Swifty. Yes. It, it was, was a very, very lovely emotional. moment. I mean, I did. I, I, we, she looked very emotional. I, too. We forgot to hold up our phones for like a second and we looked like fake fans. So we did it really quick. And then I was like, everybody's still doing it, but I kind of want to take a video now. <laughs> so of I'm going to do doing that. It. Yeah. So I did that. And then I went back to holding my phone up like a, like a, like, like a, like a like cyborg, little, like, like a sheeple, snail that you are. Like the snail that I am. <laughs> well, it was good. It was good. Evermore Ever set is good. Uh, champagne problems, fun. She did a little speech. Now that now this is this was the first speech of the evening. And what was the speech about? Gay. Hi, gay. It's Pride Month, Hi, everybody. Uh, we were Literally, waiting for it. We were waiting did. for we it. We said it before. Yeah, you like, said it actually. You were like, it's Pride Month. She's going to say something. Say something about Pride Month, as she should. And we lulled. But we laughed the whole time because we, her speech was so. So first of all, I just burst out laughing. She, she started talking about it, and it was like, okay, this is great. And she was talking about like, you know, legislation and well, people in power. Well, first she was power. talking about feeling accepted and safe space. Oh, right. And yeah, no, feeling sex in safe space. This is a safe space for you. I, I hope keep seeing these gay bitches in the crowd. Yeah, and I love that. Yeah, 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 all that. And then she started talking about legislation. And then she started to claim that. Then I thought she was going to say said, something. She said, quote, unquote, I'm always posting about. And I was like, always posting? Always? Madeline Miss literally Americana. turned to me and said, always? Miss Americana, you had you don't post about this stuff anymore. And I said, Cricket? you post when somebody when Ginny and Georgia makes a sexist joke about you. you That's when you post. You don't post about the transgender. You post about bills. you post about the guy from Blur. You post yeah. <laughs> like you're not posting about. You like, won't even post about Ticketmaster. And it's like, I was looking around the crowd. I was like, do you guys really feel like she's the greatest ally that's ever lived? Does, well, do people think that? People were eating it up. People were, I mean, I, was standing, I was standing there clapping. Me too. Only because I didn't want to be standing there not clapping. But I mean, it wasn't anything to not clap for. Right. Also, because at that point it had veered into camp because it was so absurd what she was saying. We were just lolling. And I mean, it, I think it was one of those speeches where she really like, she started a thought without really thinking where it was going or what, how it was going to end. Because she first... They it became a little self-congratulatory. She was like, I post all the time. That's not true. Second of all, it's so concerning about what's happening with legislation. So I was like, oh, is she going to, like, is there something in specific that she's going to reference and talk about? Maybe, bring, mm -hmm. I don't know, bring some awareness to whatever it is. No. She was just like, I just think it's so important to, like, really do your research on people that you elect. That's why I post about the midterms. Not one time two years ago. And then, this is my favorite part of the speech. This I literally could have burst out laughing We right did. There. I think we actually did laugh. <laughs> she, she said, you know, that's why I put stuff in my songs. Like, there's a great line in my song. You need to calm down where I say, 
don't step on his gown. His gown. And it's like, I don't remember what the follow-up was, but I'm sure it was something to the effect of, and that's all about how I believe in equality, because I was laughing. I was like, this is your <laughs> beacon. This is your gay anthem. Don't step on his gown. That's your whole idea of what... She's like, I'm an ally, guys. Men can wear dresses. Men can wear dresses. Did you Did know you that? Did you know that? Um, which it, the sentiment of it is, it's not that the sentiment of men wrong. can wear dresses is wrong. It's that the way that she was presenting it, like this is the first brick at Stonewall. Mm-hmm. It, and and I did that. I said that. So that means that I am the greatest. And ally. then it literally. So then. So then at this point, we're kind of like, what's the point of like, where is this going? And then she was like, oh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, here's champagne. For she us. the night train for a reason. Every, everything sucks for the gays, and I'm a really good ally. Now I'm fucked in the head. That literally was mm-hmm. the sequence of events, mm-hmm. and. It was so camp. I loved it. But That's what, exactly what I wanted what to What really kills me is that you know that to get up on a stage and like make a statement like that, she had to have a discussion with somebody. She had to talk Tree. to Tree Payne. And Tree Payne said, yeah, bring up the his gowns thing. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, no problem. I'm so proud of my accomplishments. I'm, I, I'm, I mean, there are other lyrics she could have pointed to if she wanted to give herself a pat on the back. Like, yeah. why be mad when you can be glad? She could have even brought up Welcome to New York. Sure. Welcome to New York. And like all boys these and great, boys and girls these and great girls. cities where we have so but many good... But it's don't step on his gown, which again proves my point that Taylor's perception of what being gay is is a very specific, not very nuanced thing. And I don't care because I don't really want her to be my, you know, champion for equality. Like I love that she said, when she said, when she said this is a safe space, I want everyone to feel welcome here. Mm-hmm. That I was like, go off queen. Yeah, go off queen. Let's leave the legislation That's really all she has to backstage. say. That's, that, it. that's it. That's, that's like, it. That's like, that's, that is how to be an ally when you're somebody who's up on a stage. You know what I mean? You already said like, shade never made anybody less gay. Tonight. And we all, and everybody we in the room it. said it. And this is a safe space, baby. We screamed it. <laughs> and it felt like one. Honestly, we were saying, like, it is Mason, Madeline's husband, was a little bit worried about, I, I guess, the, the crowd at the concert. And we just burst out laughing. It was so funny, especially when we were walking back and we were in the crowd that he was so worried about. I was, like, looking around and people were like, oh, my God, I love your jacket. Oh, my God. Here's and a look, bracelet. They're like, giving bracelets to each other. I was like, and this is what the man Ain't was nobody getting about. abducted here, although... Uh, towards the end well let's we'll get into that later. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where are we in the show now ever more champagne problems it was good um i really have much else to say about that what, what is that word and no tolerate it oh my god no that was the gag oh it was the gag, that was of, the the gag of the century that really was the gag of the century. screaming that bridge was very fun and she was cer- the theater kid energy really came out in willow and tolerate it tolerate it when she gets on top of the table honestly the whole performance is very very good it's i moving. love it, it is moving like when she's setting the table and he comes in um i'm i could be moved to tears right now mm-hmm. just thinking about it i was moved to tears last I night i was moved to tears i was moved to extreme tears um i didn't know how i'd react to hearing it for the first time live um it was it was amazing she was singing and she was singing and she sounded so good and i just felt like it was like a really good close for the for the evermore set for some reason i thought it was insane at first that it goes <laughs> yeah tolerated into ready for it but let me tell you <laughs> Out of context, the show seems insane. Now I like I now understand there is kind of like a pacing and a rhythm and a vibe to it, but it's hard to get it when you don't see it all together. Like when you're only seeing clips and videos here and there, it is kind of difficult to conceptualize how all these things work. And to a, to a certain extent, sometimes they don't work. But mm-hmm. in general, I would say that it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, everything makes a lot more sense when you actually see it. So Tolerate It finishes, and then the snake comes on screen, and Madeline nearly had her heart It attack. was scary. And I, I, people, comes out of nowhere. People joked around about, like, when they went to Glendale, they were like, let's get the shit out of me. And I was like, the snake coming on screen scared you? I find that hard to believe. It just makes a, a loud sound. And, like, you know, Tolerate has just ended. You, you just finished crying your eyes out. And, you, you know, you're trying to recuperate. And the next thing you know, a snake goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, right? It just scared me. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. But, and, and, but I knew what it meant. So I, I went from I scared, and then I went. To I live. To I live. Let me tell you, the snakes, We, I mean, we were in our element. We dominated the, the snake. Den everybody came. around us looked they like were fools sitting down. To us. They were, some of them were sitting down, which is insane. Sitting down during rep is the no. It I mean, crazy. maybe delicate. Maybe delicate. The fake people in front of us were pretending to be really happy about it, but then knew approximately zero of the words to any of the songs. So fake. But we lived ready for it. I actually, I don't have words for how no, good it, it was. No, it, it, it went was insane. It went insane. So I felt like I was levitating. What, what we a, were doula peep. I'm feeling like the luckiest snake on the face of the planet that I heard ready for it at rep 
and then I'm, I heard it last night, and now I get to hear it again tomorrow. I mean, I feel like the luckiest snake ever. Ready for it, to me, is like the song. It is. It is literally the it's song It's grown to on me hear. so much. I think that your proselytizing has really worked on me because yeah. I love Ready For It now. It just goes so hard live. The choreo is really good. Her vocals in that last chorus, she was slaying. She, she also, that's another part of the show. I mean, she's engaged the entire time, but she... That's kind of the cunt, the serving cunt mm-hmm. moment, that and vigilante and shit. And she knows exactly what she's doing. Oh, she knew. She <laughs> knew. And that snake outfit is so shiny. I, I really liked it. I liked it a lot more in person than I ever have in a picture. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I do really love the outfit, but something like seeing it in person, it's it like, glitters. wow, that thing is like. It's now, blinding almost. I, I, it's blinding. It, 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 it takes my breath away. Did we have to do all of Delicate? I suppose I so. I don't think that we did. I'm going to say, was, I'm gonna say that we did. It was fun. Especially because it's Jover. So mm-hmm. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why did you feel compelled to do all of Delicate when you could have just done... It was obvi- Delicate and now you, it's broken. You, you have to do the intro because of one, two, three, let's go, bitch. And then you do the first chorus mm-hmm. and then you do... Which, by the way, a bunch of flops in front of us got one, two, three, let's go, bitch wrong. They came in way too early. Really? Yeah. They, I didn't there were like it. 10 I... of them that did it way too early and then they looked around in their blood-soaked gowns. <laughs> And they they the, saw something we could take away, which was their Swifty <laughs> Valor. <laughs> Thank you. So that was that was good, I guess. It was just and I guess maybe it's more effective when you can see the stage because she's like there's like cracks in the stage. We couldn't see the floor itself. I'm excited tonight that we get to see like the light up the whole production of it all. But maybe it's more impressive up close. I don't know. I think we could have cut a little bit of delicate. Don't blame me into look what you made me do. I mean, what's there to say? That was a moment, I mean, that was definitely the moment, like, ever since I saw videos from the tour, that was definitely the moment that I was looking forward to the most, and let me tell you, it did not disappoint. Oh, no. Even though I knew it was coming, but I felt, I I felt kind of like, you know, the gag of the aisle. Yeah. The gag, the gag of the row, simply because of the fact that, um, I knew the words to, to, to the, I knew the exact way that it went for the, for the transition. So, reputation really good. I loved the, the lights that shot up to the sky and don't blame me. That was awesome. That gagged me more than I thought it would. I've always seen pictures of it, but like, whatever. But seeing it in person, let me tell you, it goes off. Also, the moon came out. And when the moon came out... It was a full moon. It, La got, Luna. it got spooky. La Luna. I looked at it, and I turned to Madeline, and I said, Luna. Luna. <laughs> also, something else that I was saying all night long was, <laughs> Bellissimo. Bellissimo. Bravo. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> we kept doing that. Everybody around us was like... <laughs> Bellissima. After every song. Bravo! Encore! Encore! <laughs> we thought it was really funny. We, and you know what? And we were right. It was funny. Cricket. If only people could laugh. Mm-hmm. If only, well, the girl if, next if only to people me, knew the words. The girl laughed. next to me was not there to laugh. She was there. She was clocked in. To she was there to wave. She was filming pictures. the entire show and screaming and living. And every time Taylor would look in, our, in, in the direction of even vaguely near her. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. Hi. I was like, she's, she's and not so once did she get a wave back. Swifty, Swifty card, fully active. Also, you know what? I just want to say that you should never judge a book by its cover because the girlie next to me came in with her boyfriend, and she looked like a local. She wasn't dressed in any Taylor merch. It wasn't a Taylor themed outfit. Someone offered her a bracelet, and she was like, "What is this?" Like any mature adult, she was like, "Why are you offering me this bracelet that you made?" And this one explained to her what was going on, and she was happy to get it. But I was like, "This girl is just here for a, a good time. She's here to just rock, and she likes Taylor. She knew every fucking word to every single song. Now she didn't know like what was coming up next or like what songs would be coming, but once they started, she knew each and every word more than me because I will admit, Marjorie." <laughs> even champagne problems I was like <laughs> <laughs> I felt really fake in those moments actually but she not her and you should never judge a book by its cover because she was a bigger Swifty than I that she, I believe that she's an unplugged Swifty mm-hmm. and that's the way to be a Swifty I just can't even fathom that at this point. No, like it must because, be kind of confusing because a lot of the Taylor stuff is so lore. Well, it's like uh, e- when when we were like walking back when you listen to people's conversations, they talk about shit that they see on TikTok. Oh well, I saw that she was gonna do this and I saw that she was gonna do that. So to be a truly unplugged Swifty is to be first of all you're the most free Swifty that there is. You're happy, but you do miss a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but she, she was happy. She, she she didn't need to. She didn't need the stuff that she's missing. No, not not to see the show. She it, was she was there rocking. She rocked hard. She rocked harder than anybody. And then alive. she went. Then she woke up today and went for brunch and carried about her business. Not not like us. No, <laughs> sitting Sadly, there. Not like us. Not like sitting us. Sitting here by the dock of the bay. Yeah. <laughs> gossiping about Taylor Swift. 
So, yeah, I mean, reputation part of the set, so fucking good. Was it Enchanted after that? I think it is. It's but watch so, us be fake. You can't it even... Goes reputation, Enchanted, and what does Enchanted go into? Isn't it Red? Red. And then Folklore. folklore. Yeah, so we're right. I, we're right. So Enchanted, the interlude between Enchanted and Reputation is the longest one. When Taylor came out in her dress, immediately I was like, it's over. But boy, did we love to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was the first first time I sat. Oh, in the interlude, yes. We didn't yeah, sit for Enchanted. We no. sat during the interlude, and that felt yeah, it really, felt really good. good. So, we started doing that, just sitting every time yeah. there was an interlude. And um, that I was, was thankful long. that it was long. <laughs> that <laughs> one was I'm long. Gonna be, tonight, I'm sitting more. I'm telling you this right now. Do you, and for anybody who is going you. to more than one show, the, you, you gotta sit down and not worry about it. If people's like, they're fake. If you're just doing one show, stand the whole time. Yeah, stand the whole time, obviously. But if you're gonna go to a second show, especially if it's the right day after, Pace you yourself. need to sit your ass down. And do, do not worry. It's, only, me, 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 me. it's yeah. like, eat a hot dog. No. Get over yeah. it, Janet. <laughs> Get a beer and yeah. relax. So, yeah, Enchanted was so good. The dress was so cute. It was just all, t- the speak now of it all was too brief for me. I just, I don't like the fact that it's so short. I would add Sparks Fly in after. Mm-hmm. That's what I would do. How did you feel about Enchanted? I loved Enchanted. I, she, you know, something that I noticed that she was doing um, is she was doing her, like, wistful Longing, yeah, the, the yearning look. The glance that she does over her shoulder as she's leaving after Enchanted it is very filled me with sweet. tears. No, it is so... Uh, that's probably the best part about it. It's not even just like the song, but the fact that she puts her entire Speak Now Ussie into it. <laughs> she literally gives it 100%. She's, she's Speak Now. She's in character. She said, it may only be one song, but I promise you, you will be transported. It is and the it song. Worked. Yeah. It's the song. Yeah. And it really was. So I think we were very pleased to receive that gift. Up next... Red. Mm-hmm. Red. 22. Excellent. I actually really enjoyed the box thing, too. I thought it yeah. was fun. I didn't know what it was. That was I know fun. people talked about the red box, but I didn't know that it played songs. So there's a box that a dancer brings out, and she opens it, and like it plays a little snippet of a Taylor song from Red, and everybody just sings the rest of it. And she and like, I gets you to it. sing it. It was fun. Holy Ground, State of Grace, mm-hmm. Red the song. Then we go straight into 22, which is just good, clean, fun. Do the whole thing as well. We liked the whole thing, 22. It was really good. We were just... We also, we got the 22 hat. I don't know if you guys saw that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but we did. We got the 22 they came hat. Up, Kevin from Taylor Nation came up and said, you guys, Taylor wants you to have the hat. Um, and then he put us in a trench coat. And then he put a little girl on top of us. <laughs> and she got it. And she passed it down to us. And we cut it in half. Uh, and, and we're sharing it across, across the continents, across the universe. You want a piece of it? Like the Regina George crown in Mean Girls? Just let <laughs> us know. We'll toss you a piece. Yeah. It was great. So 22, fun. We are never an I knew you were trouble. I hate to say it, dragged on. Dragged on. That's when I started. That was the first time in the show where I was like, I am feeling a little bit of like I'm bored creeping in, which is like, I don't, I feel like people are going to take me seeing that out of context. <laughs> Be like, I'm bored. No. I'm like I'm sitting there like, I want to leave. And this is stupid. But I was just like, I wanted it to be going faster than it was. That's, That's I mean. where the pacing was, yeah. was kind of off. Yeah. So it was like, I think it, this really could have just been fixed had she not done all of We Are Never. Mm-hmm. Just do half of We Are Never and do half of I Knew Your Trouble and keep it moving. We don't need to do all of We Are Never. The second verse of We Are Never is nothing anyway. Like it's not it's not different from the first. It's not it doesn't have a better lyric. So I would just go straight into that. Also the choreo for We Are Never not my favorite. I knew your trouble. Could we have done something a little different? Could we have spiced it up a little bit somehow? It it served. She was serving. But the smoke came out. Mm-hmm. The smoke came out. We Ooh. like we love when the smoke comes we out. We felt it. And then we get into All Too Well 10, which I loved. I really, really loved All Too Well 10. I screamed all the words. It was amazing to hear everybody singing the, the bridge of All Too Well. It was powerful. It was powerful. And the, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm standing on a Taylor show, like, looking around. Who knows the words? But, like, I just happened to notice, only because he was so annoying, the ramen noodle in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know the words to All Too Well 10. But he was pretending to. That was the most confusing thing. He'd be like... And you I just, saw the faker. I know the words. This and is the thing. Again, I, I'm not doing this to people at the shows. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing who's a real fan. We're recording. I would just simply notice. I took note. Good reporters make observations. I took note. That's an observation. <laughs> That's what we saw. But very good. Also, it was... I don't know. It was just... It was very meaningful. It was the, the first time we got to address the TV project. And she was explaining how important it was for her to own her masters obviously as swifties we feel passionately about that even though some of us don't always stream the tv but <laughs> <laughs> it was great it was great and she was serving heartbroken 
at the she, end. She gave it. She gave it a throw. She put her entire red ussy into, mm-hmm. <laughs> into All Too Well Dead. She did. And I, I respected that. Um, I was also really surprised. I actually preferred it this way now that I thought about it, but, like, I was a little bit disappointed in the moment that the leaves confetti were very brief mm-hmm. and the snow confetti were very brief. But I feel like it was simply meant to add c- cinema Just a and a moment to the lyrics. And, like, I actually appreciate it now. Like, I did want a leaf. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I'm sorry. I want a leaf want confetti. A leaf. Fair enough. Um, I also wanted a leaf, yeah, actually. I, it's really cute and I really like it. Um, I've never seen anyone take one. Maybe they don't go I saw somebody audience. trying to sell one because they're there's just a faint dusty. Yeah, they're hard to get. So if you're in front, you can only get them if you're in like some front losers row. picking up confetti from the floor on the way out. Well, Sorry, that is loser right here. I I have never been in an area where confetti actually falls on. You're me. taking trash from the floor and taking it home. So the confetti fell and it wasn't anywhere near me. And I was like, how am I on the floor for the first time? And I still don't get any confetti. The only acceptable way to receive confetti at the Eras tour or any tour is like if your hand is in the air and it comes into your hand and then you hold it and it's yours. Picking it up off the floor, I don't know. There's something degenerate and godless about that. Now you're going to make a lot of people upset with that. That's a Swifty thing. Well, me making Swifties upset? More likely than you might Another think. Another day for the Swift dollar. More than you might think. Okay, so after Red, we went into Folklore? No. Yes. Was it Enchant? No. No, we already did okay, that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Folklore. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the show. One of Madeline's least favorite parts of the show. Interesting that we this did was, I thought it would be the other way around. No, this was the part of the show where I started to drag. Because... And your feet were really just... My feet were in the gutter, and I was feeling like, this is crazy. <laughs> I was feeling like, I can't believe we have to come back tomorrow and do the same thing over. Because, like, when you're actually there, you're like, this is a lot of um, screaming. Mm-hmm. and jigging and dancing and people and the girl next to me was up against my body yeah she was and it was so hot in my stupid suede jacket i am not ashamed to say there was a moment where i started to question my allegiance to swiftyism because i was like i'm fading and it's like only about halfway through the show at that point right folklore is the longest set too so i was like I don't want to. I don't want this right now you i want to came back to, the surprise song I came revived back. you no i came back so i came back I don't really remember being there for folklore except for August, just because she was right there. I loved it. I thought it was great. I loved. I thought the one was really good. The folklore set, I think, is the prettiest one. The cabin with the, mm-hmm. with the moss on yeah. the side is very pretty. She lay down on the one and stayed lying down with her eyes closed for a pretty long time. I, I don't even like, remember I was that. like, get up. <laughs> get that should have been me. Get your ass That's up. That's how I felt. I feel like, <laughs> let me up on the mossy green and let me have a nap. <laughs> because I'm, that's how I feel Come right on, now. Come on, let me that's that cabin. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm really hoping that tonight I let myself relax enough that I'm not that, exhausted and that by folklore. And also that you sit where you want to sit. Exactly. I don't if, it, if it's a high energy part of the show and you want to sit, just perch. Just, just perch. Take because perch. I want to actually, I did not enjoy folklore last night. Not to say that I don't, th- I think it's bad. It's just that. I was tired. I was yeah. I was like physical disrepair. Yeah. So I hope I enjoy it more tonight. That's all I can say. We we it's ironic though, because that's probably the best view we had of her all night because people were sitting mm-hmm. and we could really see her in the house. Then she did Betty, which was super fun. Again, I uh, Betty I forget, Betty's a really good song. I was I was enjoying listening to it. She also gave a speech before and vaguely mentioned like, oh, pandemic alcoholism and I was like, Don't do that. Don't do that because they love to accuse you of being an alcoholic on Twitter all the time. I wouldn't do it. But she doesn't give shit, and that is her right. And that's her right. That's her right. And the trans... I I was very impressed by the transitions between songs in the folklore set. I thought that they were all very good. She kind of just walks down at the end of Betty Sits and goes straight into The Last Great American Dynasty, which was cool. It was interesting that she had, like, different set pieces. Again, the staging behind her was very beautiful. She... I think she likes folklore more than Evermore. That's just my feeling on that. But... She was she was getting she was wearing the green dress which was not that is not my favorite folklore dress I wanted the purple maybe we'll get it tonight it was she always does a different she never does the same one two nights in a row so we're gonna so, have different options for yeah. everything that's a sleigh that was the only outfit that I was like man we didn't get the fugly enchanted dress I think I really really would have lost my mind well let's not that. even talk about that because I want the pink one for tonight yes we want the pink one tonight I want the purple dress tonight the white one I'd also be okay with so I mean we're gonna get one of them but it was it was good last great American Dynasty again I might cut that. I might take her off the list because folklore is too long. It's too long. It's the longest part of the set and it's too long. And it's like right before, it's right before 1989, which is right before surprise songs. So there's like a morale dip. Yeah, <laughs> that, we that's, all, it's really a morale dip for me. That's I'm sure, the test. Yeah. That's the moment where you're like, can I 
do more because you know that you're really only not even halfway. Yeah. You're kind of just about halfway there. Yeah. So then after that, we go into, is it August after that? I think so. I think so. August was really good. She loves that song. God, she loves that song. Oh, and you can tell in her little face. Oh, she, she was serving face the entire time, too. Serving. This was, I, I said this earlier, but this was the moment where I could see her the clearest and I could really see her face. And this was, <laughs> Zach and I were talking about, like, you know, we always make fun of, like, Kelly didn't look at you. She looked she, at me. She looked. <laughs> she looked at us. She, she looked, looked right at, at us. us. There and Cardigan, too, because yeah. a lot of people had sat down. And we were, I literally had, our, every time she opened, arms open, staring at her, pointing at her, hearts, kisses. Well, let me tell you, I experienced that because this is what I experienced when I was, finally, I could see Taylor. <laughs> this is what I experienced. <laughs> that is what I experienced. And let me tell you, I was from just me? getting there like, from you, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would have not done it if I knew it was in your face. <laughs> fucking arms out wide. Literally. I was like. But she saw me. I could still see her. But I was But you like, had an arm also. Arm in your face. You just tapped me you, and told me to stop. That was exactly what you hated ramen noodle for. I would have stopped if you told me to stop. I, but it wasn't. It wasn't in my way. I you wanted to let me rock. Hilarious. You're letting me rock. And I was. I let the girly next to me. It was like the girl who's doing this. <laughs> I let her fucking rock too. The guy in front of us had a fucking flag sign that he was about to hold up with oh, his friend, yeah. and I very loudly went like, "Absolutely the fuck not." It was during. You need to calm down. I was like, "No," and he like kind of dropped it. Never picked it up again. And he actually left it in a seat. And it was like, make, Ameri- make America great again, Taylor Swift. First of all, don't hold that up. It's not going to go well for you. No, it's not she cute. Read I don't get that. Like, she also doesn't read the signs. So just don't waste your time. Don't ruin someone's experience. But he, he wised up. He, he knew. He, he knew. knew that the HBICs were behind him and we would hold him accountable <laughs> for his actions. Because I would. I, I, as I told Madeline before it even started, I was like, he is a flag. And if I see him holding it up, I will grab it by the back and I will yank it out of his hands. You are not going to believe... Okay, we can't... We, I can't even get into that. I just got a crazy text from my mom. <laughs> but just <laughs> okay. believe it. I don't have time we'll, for that. We'll do that after this. <laughs> yeah. So then, after that, I mean, we go into... Is it Illicit Affairs? Yes. Illicit Affairs, amazing. Brilliant. show mm-hmm. Never mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. done before. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good. My Tears Ricochet. Why do we have to do it all? Why? The whole thing? Is it necessary? That's what... This is what I'm saying. Like, was it a serb? Yes. Was it a moment? But again, it really wasn't a moment to me because I was in the gutter. <laughs> and My Tears Ricochet doesn't make it any better. No, it made it worse. It made it worse. She, the end of My Tears Ricochet, wow. Wow. She turned it up. She was screaming. Mm-hmm. She was and, singing her fucking little heart I, out. Yeah, she, she really, she, and I, and I do feel bad being like, take it off because it's clear that she really wants to. I don't want to take it off. I want to She shorten. loves the set list. She, she loves My Tears Ricochet on the set list. She loves whipping it out. And so I respect it. I respect it. She gave it 100%. But I do think it needs to be shortened. I think does she, she doesn't really shorten any of the songs. Hardly in the any. Set. Hardly. None. Illicit Affairs, but it's an excerpt. It's not like the full thing. I, I feel like it's more of an addendum to August than anything else. Mm-hmm. Just, I think it's just a transition moment yeah. so that she can get on the floor mm. for my tears. And then after that, it's Cardigan, right? We go straight into Cardigan? Yeah, cardigan, and then that's the end. And Cardigan was fine. Nah. I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just... I'm not mad on that song. I don't really listen to that song so much anymore. Mm-hmm. I do respect it for what it is, but it's not... I love the, the second chorus and Into the Bridge is great. But yeah. it, it's a slow start for me with Cardigan. I don't yeah. really love the first verse or the first chorus. But it, we saw it. I saw yeah. it. And it existed. 1989. This was when Matt, I, we were sitting and Madeline was like, I don't think I can. <laughs> you were like, you were like yeah, I'm no, done. Yeah, no, I said straight up, I was like, I don't know if I have the, the, the power to overcome. And I said, and you don't have rock to. rock through 1989. No, what you said to me was, style will revive you. <laughs> That's literally what you said to me. <laughs> First I said, you don't have to. Then I said, style, style will, will revive you. you. And I was, was I right? I was right. You were on your feet. No, I was on my, but <laughs> me being on my feet and me being a full human being again. Now this, I was negative hatred that I have to share a bed with this evening. With the power of Christ. And he did. And and but when I really came back was when she started Bad Blood, I was like, okay, now I feel like we're getting towards the end. Surprise I kinda songs. perk up a little bit. Surprise songs are coming. Surprise songs are really where I forgot that I have feet. No, you forgot, forgot that you were a human. Yeah. <laughs> you were in a different area. Yeah. So we did style, that was good. I mean, what can you say? The nineteen eighty nine songs? Like they're they're great. They're good. They're good, clean, fun. Blank space, great. Shake it off, good. Bad blood, amazing. While the streams, did we have to just repeat the same line of the bridge over and over? Could we not have had a little bit more of a song in it? That's the way that I feel about it too. Um, and again, it's especially irritating that it's right before the surprise song. It's like really, it almost does uh, an injustice to the 1989 set 
Um, maybe that's why she did it because it's high energy. So mm-hmm. it's like you can kind of just like, you know, whip it, yeah. and then you're at the surprise songs. And Bad Blood is short, but it's good, which is why I appreciate it. And bad she Blood doesn't do short, any verse. Short and sweet. No verse. And it's like the perfect amount of Bad Blood, especially because you're approaching the surprise songs. And that's what everything's about. Well, yeah, that's what everything's about. And yeah. I have to say, one of the most serving kind of moments of the night was when she just walks with the girls at the end of Bad Blood. Yeah. She just struts. She just struts. And it's great. And and we clap. What I, I would rather, always rather her just strut than dance. She's a great strutter. She's excellent. Well, she's, she's a model at heart. She is. She's a model. Then we get into the surprise songs. And we were really, really excited about this. And we were Madeline said that she wished before we even saw anything of the show, she said that she wished that she wouldn't do like a protracted intro and give away the song before she started playing it, that she would just go straight into it. And that's basically what she did. Yeah, All she said was it's from 1989, and then we had to be like, what? Which one? The, the only, when I was sitting there thinking was like, I know that she's played like most of 1989 already. All, all the big ones are on the set list, and she's already done a lot of the big ones. For it. So I was like, I had a few big... that it could be, and like my mind was, choo 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 I had a big, I had a moment where I was like, is she going to do all you have to do is stay? I think I said it to you. I was like, is it, I, I, and, is and it I was time like, for that? I was thinking in my head, it's either all you had to do was stay or I wish you would. But then she went straight into 2 a.m. And it was so good. It was a really was good surprise song. so good. She sang. She sounded she really sang. good. It's like, I feel like that kind of song is like in her perfect vocal range. Yes. And she sounded Not so challenging for her at all. And clean. And everybody was singing along. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. I wish I wish I. Sad also, sad song. We were, we were, we were um, when I tell you, that truly was like, I snorted a line. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was back. I was, well, Whoa. if that was one line, the next song was the an overdose. The next line was an overdose. I, I thought that I was gonna, I was like thinking when she, when she said the lakes, I was like, I'm gonna lose my voice. Like, there's no way I'm surviving. There's no way we're recording anything. Cause I could feel, you know, when you scream and you've been screaming so much that like your throat, like, yeah, <gasps> I lost my voice at one point. I'm yeah. surprised I haven't anything today to share with you all. That was me when she went, what? And this is, see, I know a thing or two. So everybody was like, well, what song do you think she would play in Chicago? And I was like, well, Chicago doesn't have any major themes that she's talked about in her songs before, but it does have a great lake. And everybody called me stupid. Everybody said she doesn't think about things like that when she puts her surprise songs. She actually said that she she did when she did the intro to the song. And everybody called me a fool. And I said, tin hat on, the lake's night one, Chicago. And Uh, can anybody tell me? She got on her little piano and said, you know what I love about Chicago? There's a great big lake. But then she, she punked us. She was like, kind of like an ocean. And then we, lost, we were, we were, we were, so, like, What's we were so gone <laughs> for a second. <laughs> we were so gone, and then we were so back. And then we were so back. We were so back. And she gave it everything. She sang. I could tell she that she sang. actually really loves that song. She sang, but not as much as the girl behind us sang. Oh my god, she was doing, and she was giving it American Idol. She was she, going, oh, it was. Take ah! me to the lakes. Well, Literally. I'm she was Meanwhile, giving... I'm like a feral animal mm-hmm. directly in front of her. Like You were still. You were literally stock still, staring at the screen with your phone. I didn't hear a peep from you. It was, <laughs> Once the song started, you I were was in like, crisis. Literally. You were in crisis, and all, if I looked over, all I could just see was. She was just mouthing the lyrics, very, very small, quiet, contained movements. I didn't want to ruin my video. You did it. You and did I did it. You did it. You slayed. You slayed. <laughs> but we were, we turned to each other after the surprise songs and we were like, I'm back. Yeah, I'm so back. back. We're so, so back. back. <laughs> and we also were like, wow, we're getting fucking flops tomorrow. Yeah. We're expecting flops today. And you know what? We rock because we had slaves. We had slaves, and you know what? That's more than any any snail, any swifty can ask for. Mm-hmm. Two slaves. We're that so doesn't happy. happen to anybody. Now, when I started really to feel my energy waning was midnights. I was like, "Are we really gonna do this?" And we did it. Is there time? And we did it. <laughs> can I? And we did it. Lavender haze. Good. Lavender haze and slaves. I wasn't feeling very good during Lavender Haze. Then I was so back for Antihero. I was so back for Antihero. And then I was, Midnight Rain, I was engaged. Mm Mm-hmm. Vigilante shit, flagging. I almost sat down. I was like, I'm going to sit. And then I was like, just watch it once. Watch it. It It was sexy. Tonight? I also, at this point, my monkey brain was engaging, and she has a really hot dancer in Vigilante shit. Monkey brain engaged. I was just staring at him. Monkey brain engaged. And I had to keep being like, look at Taylor. You paid $3,000 for this. See, you will look at the little blonde bitch. Stop looking at that guy's butt. (laughs) <laughs> and I just couldn't he was really hot but you know I moved on eventually eventually I ended up looking back at the person I intended to see yep. and that we completely forgot about Bejeweled 
When it started, oh, we were like, when it started, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Where's for God. Play Star Mastermind right now? But, Don't we were play like, with no, me. please. And it's like funny because I do really love Bejeweled, but I, this was what I'm talking about. I was not in any frame of mind to truly enjoy it. So another thing that I'm hoping for tonight, let me enjoy Bejeweled instead of yeah. thinking, when is this gonna be over? When will this end? When will Seriously, it be Jover? Yeah, I need was... it to be Jover immediately, yeah. expeditiously Jover, please. Yeah. I also thought that. I thought Mastermind was really good. I really, I was, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I was it. living. I was, yeah, I was screaming. Yeah. I had my hands in the air. Yeah. I yeah. was, I was pointing at her. I was like, I think she must have been scared. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that no, bad. It was, was just, just it was more. It was like moving. right here. I was, I was like, like moving. I was yeah. pointing. Yeah. I was screaming. Um, cryptic and Machiavellian because I care. It was a Mastermind again. Underrated performance. Then we get into Karma and Karma. I love karma. But it's just it's, as the final song, I didn't have anything to give. I uh, know. I did enjoy karma as my. I gave it, in, but I remember it the God. least. I do remember looking at the dancers, so it's so. Weird. Also, the, the fireworks are fucking crazy at the end. Of I that. enjoyed That's that the show. I enjoy. I, People I will pay money to see. I love fireworks. Those fireworks. I and so I really enjoyed that. And then I was like, the second that song was over, I said, "Let's go." And then these Hours. whirlies. We hustled our ass. We're vacuuming like, the floor, <laughs> basically. And I literally went, move. I went, move. I need to get out. And they yeah. were like, uh, I'm trying to get... I was like, shut up. Go. I know also, what you're doing. Someone asked Madeline if they could oh, trade friendship bracelets. This is not my proudest moment. Said, this is not no! my proudest moment. Girl, it no. just took me... She, like, we were walking. Like, it wasn't like I was just standing there and she this approached me. This was before me. we came in, right? No, we were in the... We were in on the floor. Oh, we were in. And yeah. we were, like, walking back to our seats... And, like, you were a couple steps ahead of me, and I'm walking my way to follow you. And she just, like, stops me. And she's like, are you trading bracelets? And I was like, it you took me off no. guard. I, I'm not good when I'm taken off guard. That's kind of when I can be. That's when I, I can be, like, story about that. <laughs> I can be my most unfortunate. And she just, like, took me aback. I don't like being. Where was I? Out. I had just walked away. You were ahead of me. So, like, you had no idea this occurred. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no, sorry. And I just, like, kept going. Well, also, to be fair. We, don't, we actually don't have that many bracelets, and the ones that we were wearing were ones we wanted to keep. Like, we didn't want to give them away. Which is like, don't you guys, do you, you guys don't make bracelets that you're not willing to trade? Because I may, uh, every one that I make is, I mean, I have one that just says Mason on it. What's that? <laughs> and you're not <laughs> allowed to have to it, even what? if you did want it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the only bracelet that I traded all night was what happened to us. Where I'm not even going to tell you what kind of shape we were in. When we were leaving, we were broken. So What's the opposite of being bejeweled? Yeah, I, mean, I was a piece of dirt. I, w- I was already broken during the show, and then like you a piece of paper. Take this huge long walk with this massive crowd, and everybody's all around you, and you just want to get away from these people and the noise. But you can't. And then you're in the noise, and there's paddy wagons driving by, blasting Taylor songs. And I was like, I've had enough. <laughs> it's of that. a nightmare, literally. Yeah, it's literally a nightmare. And the songs like, they were blasting too, "Jump Then Fall," "Delicate," "You Belong With." I was like, leave me. Leave Britney alone. Every single one of them. It's like, do you guys have a union where you go and talk about this? I like, think so. They were ready. Wagon they were ready. They were ready. And we should have gotten one to take us away. We really <laughs> should have. But the, those guys, you think Morel was bad. <laughs> I can tell they're chatty. <laughs> they were chatty. So then we eventually, we were trying to get an Uber. We were si- we were sitting on the we car. This was maybe her. the lowest ebb of the evening. Like, we had had like four we, Ubers cancel on yeah. us. We were, our feet were, like, we were hurting. We were in pain. And a car pulls up. And there is frantic waving from the car. And I was like, I knew they were pointing at us, but I didn't really know what for. Window rolls down, screaming. Screaming. And then this one girl helped, helpfully translated and said, our friend loves your podcast. She's been looking for you. And I was like, well, then I snapped into Swiftologist mode. She was, she was like, she made a bracelet. And I was like, okay, so I went over to her. She gave me the bracelet. I gave her, and she's the only person who got a bracelet from me. And she got the bracelet that I actually really wanted to keep. It says EOAS, and it's like gold beads yeah. and green beads. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. So that's that lucky snake. I can't remember her name. Oh, I was just reading it earlier today. She's in the Discord, though. She's like truly, it's like a true snake. So she, and we were hoping to meet some snakes, and we just didn't have to meet anyone because we're flops. Nobody wanted to say hi to us until, we're this, flops. until this moment when we got screamed at. And it was the, the, the worst moment to encounter us. It was really. the worst moment. Madeline's feet were literally off. Like, no, I, I, from I, I'm like, I was like crap. So I was in this like skin tight dress. And it was in traffic. Keep that in mind too. It's like there's in traffic. moving traffic. So we I'm like on the curb. crunched together like this so that nobody can see up my dress. And I got my, my boots in, I, we you know, swapped bracelets. She gave me a beautiful Holy Ground bracelet. So and she I made one move. that said, Sad, beautiful, tragic for you. She said, I have one for Madeline, too. I didn't move a and I looked inch. back to see if Madeline was coming towards <laughs> us. And she literally was sitting like a sim. She was like, 
Like when the sim sat on the toilet, the she was literally <laughs> was like, there. there was nothing there. I was literally like, I, I was like, does Madeline even know what's going on? No. Did you see what was happening? I just like I, I was when I came back, it? you were like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> what, who was that? You were like, what did did that? What? But she gave her. I took the bracelet for Madeline gave her, and we thank you. We honestly we would have loved to have meet you in any other circumstance. That was that was not a good moment. Mm-mm. I'm happy that you were so happy though. Yeah, it was really it was you, really sweet. You probably sat down more than we did. Yeah. <laughs> also, you were in a car, which yeah. was more than we had. And we were on the I'm curb. I'm like baffled why you didn't say get out yeah. and let the snakes if you were, in the car. If you were a real snake. We would have ridden. We she had like five of her friends in the back. We would have ridden them trunk. out and put us in and taken <laughs> us somewhere. Yeah. And that would have been the best. Uh-huh. We we honestly, we would have given you a custom episode. <laughs> We really would. So I guess that's mm-hmm. that's 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 the experience. Mm-hmm. It was great. It was cha- it was you know what it was everything that it was gonna be chaotic. It's what we were promised. Happy, free, confused, lonely, miserable, magical. Mm. All of the above. Tick 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 tick. Tick 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 tick. <laughs> tick 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 tick. We got absolutely zero footage. Um. Well. Well, no good footage. No, nothing usable. <laughs> really, nothing usable. So now we really have to go because we have an hour to get ready for the show. So, cricket. The peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Subscribe to the Patreon. Goodbye.